here we are back at the bench another lovely summer day and uh, what do we got here well we got a little mascot it's gonna move them over here they're a little happier this week because the temperature is you know tolerable <laughs> it's kind of nice out actually anyway um, this is like a vlog I don't have any message or any real direction to uh, to go in it's not a lesson it's not a, an expose or anything I'm just gonna talk I'm gonna try and wrap it up as quickly as I possibly can but there are a bunch of things I wanted to like get to um, yeah this thing right you're, you're like what the hell is that um, basically it's a whack um, hair shaper that I put into these crappy scales from I think China um, a long time ago I wanted to make uh, bat wing scales for a razor and my attempt failed miserably it just the geometry was all off and I recently I saw these on eBay and I went hunting around I got them like like super cheap hold on a sec I actually I have the original I just realized I look behind my bench while I'm talking to you all right so this is the thing I just did this is my original attempt there are two of these in this world. This one sits by my bench. The other one is uh, glued on top of the uh, T.A. Azard box my girlfriend's straight razor uh, lives in. She has a boker, <clears throat> a full hollow, five-eighths. Very nice razor. Anyway, so this sits on top of that, well, not this one, uh, the mate. So I had two of these. And as you can see, like the geometry here would never work for scales. All right. So... Um, when I saw this, I saw the improvement in the design and figured it might work. And you know what? It kind of does. I can use it like this. But I'm not really ecstatic over it. And I may just pull the whack out and use this as a template. And I, I would make it a little longer. And then I, I would move things around. And uh, maybe cut it out of balsa wood first just to uh, see how it worked. And then maybe pay someone... <laughs> to uh, do it at a G10 because I could do this at a G10 but it would come out looking I think uh, pretty crappy I only have a uh, Dremel and I don't think the Dremel would be doing a great job anyway uh, so there's that uh, I've been doing some more work on this um, I'm gonna get this into Etsy this is a um, Karasu I, I think I showed it in another video look at the Karasu lines like running all the way through it um, I had a little bit of like a squiggle line in the top and it was a visual distraction it didn't interfere with uh, honing but if you remember if you look at the other video th these spots are like over here and they're bigger they, they started to move and I can see more spots coming up through the result of getting down into these layers you can see better over here right of uh, the Karasu going through the stump anyway I was gonna keep this and uh, it really is a great stump um, I, I really, really enjoyed honing on it. I, I've done a bunch in the past week or so. And uh, you all probably remember this guy, right? <laughs> See how it's taped up? That tape that tape means I don't ever want to hone this razor again. This is from that AK video. Um, that like hour and a half behemoth uh, roundup of AK stones. And uh, yeah, I got a, a whole bunch of emails from people like all over the globe about that. And uh you know, uh, about 98, 99% of it was really positive. So for all of you that took the time out to say nice things, thank you. For the people that, like, got pissed off because I didn't include the stone that they use. I tell you what, you know, uh, <laughs> I would say you could send me yours and I'll test it, but I'm not going to do that. Um, come on, man. I bought 10 8Ks and, and work with them. I think that's enough of an investment on my part. You're going to complain because I didn't use some obscure thing sold on a woodworking uh, website eh, please <clears throat> can't can't do everything so anyway so yeah this is that razor and uh, I really don't ever want to hone it again uh, I will use it I guess for uh, testing stuff and I just wanted to get some more laps in on this tonight so when I write it up um, it's a little uh, clear in my mind it, it does the stone definitely does have the uh, melting frozen chocolate sensation which is really quite nice uh, it leaves a frosted bevel not a high 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 polish um, 
Where's the slurry? Okay, here's some slurry. <laughs> you know, so uh, I make a little bit of slurry, not a whole lot. That should be good. See? And, um, yeah, the feeling on this stone is great. The edges have been great. You know, this razor, on the other hand, is like, I know, it's missing like an eighth of an inch of steel off the bottom of it. I uh, honed the crap out of it for that 8K video. Um, it served its purpose. You know, it's a typical gold dollar. It needed to have like a whole bunch of spine wear done to it. And, uh, you know, to get it to a point where I want to shave with it. You know, a uh, bevel angle. Oh, yeah, bevel angle. I got into uh, a post on a forum this week uh, about bevel angles. And uh, somebody who um, I guess fancies themselves to be an authority um, was claiming that bevel angles don't matter. You know, and when I read stuff like that, it's like I understand really what they mean is bevel angles don't matter to them. But of course bevel angles matter. Like every single edged tool ever made. You know, this guy here, right? The angle on this edge, bevel, okay, matters, okay? This knife was designed to have, it was, it wasn't just, it didn't come off of a tree. It wasn't grown. Somebody designed it. So they, they chose a particular type of steel, you know? And um, it's a Gerber applicate. It's a small one. <clears throat> the full size one's on my uh, the, my bench behind me. I'm not going to go get it. It's too big. Anyway, um, so this steel, right, can only manage to keep an edge of a particular angle, you know. And you could make it very obtuse, so you know the the, the steel would hold it. But then, would it be an effective cutting tool? You know, and, and the same goes for every single edge tool out there. The geometry is chosen by design. It's not just happened on accidentally. And if you don't think it's important, then that's fine. But it is important. <laughs> it just might not be that important to you. Or maybe you just don't realize it or you don't know how to deal with it. You know, uh, and when I say you, I don't mean, you know, don't, don't go taking it personal. <clears throat> unless, you know, the guy who is sharing Babel is listening, then he could take a personal, I don't care. Um, <clears throat> because I think sharing misinformation is, is stupid, okay? <clears throat> so, like, this is a ZY, right? This, this is a piece of shit, okay? It's another Chinese letter opener. Um, people, I know, people buy them, people hone them, people shave with them, okay? If you don't do the work, to the, if I don't do the work, okay, on this to make it a good shaver, then I, I will despise it. If I just go and hone this now to an edge, <clears throat> and yes, I know how to hone. I think that's an established fact. If you don't believe me, I, I can't help you, <laughs> all right? But I do know how to hone. So if I just take this and I hone it as best as the, it can be honed in this state, I'm going to hate the way it shaves. Why? Okay, here's the math, okay? I don't do this with every blade, but I do it with a lot of blades because I looked at this and I was like, nah, something's wrong, okay? And, you know, my tool of choice, okay, is my Starrett USA-made digital, okay? Yeah, it's overkill, but I actually use that for other things, not just razors. Anyway, so spine width averages out 5.9, all right? Width averages out 18.2. My bevel angle is 18.7, okay? And in my experience, I have never enjoyed a razor with a bevel angle really over like 17, 18 degrees, okay? Um, has it happened? Sure. Let's say it's happened one out of 20 blades, all right? I shoot for a more acute angle than this. Now, <clears throat> when someone says that this doesn't matter, Okay, let's just say that this was 17 degrees, right? I, I wouldn't bother trying to bring it down to 16 degrees. I would, I would hone with it at 17. I might, uh, at 18.7, I, I might think, okay, I could probably get away with it. But you see, I, I have experience with these Chinese razors. Now, you, someone else, might not 
have that experience. You might not have worked with 50 or 100 of these and worked the geometry up and down the pike to change the bevel angles repeatedly degree by degree and then tested them to see how it feels when you're shaving with it, okay? So if you haven't done that, saying that it's not important doesn't really apply to me because I have and I know it does, okay? Um, more importantly than this, okay, is um, a dimension that you don't see here. Uh, you don't see it here either, all right? And that is the width going along the bevel. Now you see that line, okay? From here to here, okay, the grind gets increasingly thicker, noticeably so, okay? So, um, like 30% thicker. So I know that if I do put this down, to try and make a good shaver out of it. The first thing I'm going to wind up doing is taping the edge and honing the snot out of the spine, dropping off uh, enough metal. You, you, the math is easy to figure out. So all you do is you figure out, okay, I got to go from 5.9 to just for the sake of argument, I want to go to um, five millimeters. So um, I will start working on a diamond plate until I'm at 5.5 and then I'll work on the other side until I get to 5 and that way I basically have taken the same amount off either side and you know I will have started to achieve the geometry that I would be most happy with I mean it's still one of these crappy Chinese blades so all of that work goes into a razor like this one that like if I get four or five shaves on it it's like you know call the congressional record all right so um there's that. So, you know, it, it does matter, okay? It's like, you know, we don't shave with axes, right? See the profile on the axe? Okay, it's like, I don't know, 40 degrees or something. like. It's like tremendous, like 20 on the side. It's like, why? Because this thing is designed for splitting wood logs, okay? Yeah, I restore and hone and sharpen these too. <laughs> That's an uh, old Kelly axe from the USA down in Virginia. <clears throat> that's like awesome steel. I got this really cheap in a yard sale. You can see like the tamper line over here. Like all of this is like, th this was, I don't think this was ever resharpened after factory. I think some guy threw it in his, his shed and forgot about it. It It's seen better days like, you know, I'm going to sand it down a little bit and paint it. It doesn't have to be super pretty. And then I'll put a nice edge on it and go like split some wood. Anyway, that's out as a prop. Okay. This is not an ax. I do not want a 40 degree bevel. I don't even want a 20 degree bevel, okay? This, before I killed it, <laughs> I think it was about 16.5. Um, there's another one here somewhere. Here we go. This one was worked down. It's in another video, okay? I uh, dropped the uh, spine width down, and this was like 16.5 and 17, okay? This shaves a lot better than a stock gold dollar, okay? That, you know, that's for me, you know? Um, following the geometry, following the math, yeah, of course it's important because if it wasn't important, it wouldn't be there. It's how the tool was designed. So, you know, anyway, so there's that. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, um, what else uh, went on this week here, uh, brush-wise? Um, well, I'm showing you this and you have no idea why. This actually is my uh, lovely uh, beehive bottom uh, ever ready. This used to have a um, D01 tube end from Shave Mac, and that knot in this handle never opened up. It was like trying to lather with, like, I don't know, a, a, a spear made out of hair. It was like jamming into my face. It was just never worked right. I don't know why. This is out because this is a, another D01. I, I got two at the same time. Same exact knot, same specs. This one works great. Now, I don't know what happened with the one that was in here, whether or not I set it too shallow and it was choked up on too far and the splay couldn't happen, but um, I get these uh, overstuffed um, finest two bands. I have not made for me. In fact, I have a, a bunch uh, coming now. I, I ran out. <clears throat> there was a run on them because they're super soft and got great backbone and um, 
they hold a lot of lather and they let the lather go. Anyway, it's a good knot. So I, I decided to bite the bullet and cut the DO1. That thing must have cost me like a buck and a quarter when I bought it. I've had it like 10 years. It was killing me to do it. I was nervous as hell drilling it out, but I did it. And then what I did was I uh, tuned up the lettering and then sealed it, which I hadn't done before. So I just did it a little nicer. This is now like one of my favorite brushes. This thing is freaking awesome to work with. Um, loving that. You know, the first uh, soap that uh, I worked um, into this knot was, um, I'm sure you heard of them, that company, the Holy Black. I have this stuff from them, the Regents. Um, this was like a, a little bit of a marketing thing. You know, it's got, the, it's a crock, you know, and it's a, it's a crope, it's pretty soft. Um, the Castle Massey got them uh, an old recipe out of like some, I don't know, bat infested leather book in a dungeon or some shit. I don't know. And um, <clears throat> Holy Black took the recipe and worked it so they could uh, come up with a modern version of it. I, I don't know how close to the original they could get because sometimes old recipes have old ingredients you can't get. But... I, I ran into this thing and uh, I bought it and it's a limited edition, which means nothing to me really other than it's in this cool crock and um, I love the soap, you know, and uh, that was the first soap I lathered up into my new two band finds and it was awesome, you know, um, shortly after that I saw the Holy Black came out with, uh, what do you call it, uh, a, a tangerine thing, it just uh, it dropped Friday and uh, Everybody's nuts, you know, I, I don't know why because uh, well, I know why because they didn't get any because there were only 300 made But there's like so much whining about it. It's like dude. It's soap. You didn't get it I wanted to try it and I don't even really know if I would like a tangerine soap or splash But I, I thought the packaging looked cool and sometimes I'm a sucker for packaging and my experience with the region soap is good So, you know, I was down with it, but um uh I only made 300 it sold out in like 30 seconds and i wasn't even aware of it no i didn't follow them on every social media blah 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 but you know everybody's like you know there was all this chatter over the weekend it's like relax already man anyway so um yeah there was a little bit of buzz about that and i i've been honing a lot this weekend on this i didn't have like a ton of work for my etsy shop or other stuff to do there was some like okay I, I've been doing some uh, Naguras. There are more. That's just one little uh, smattering of them. I was doing those and sealing them and then doing this. I'm doing a lot of honing. It's like I, I love honing on the stone. It's it's incredible. Um, you know, there was some uh, chatter recently about, um, you know, fake stones. Uh, there was a guy who uh, got busted uh, selling... Uh, fake stones he was stamping them up i think the guy was in uh, russia i mentioned it in another video he got caught called out whatever i mean people are going to go back to him because uh, you know people seem to forgive that or ignore it and they don't want to admit that the stone they bought could possibly be a counterfeit that way they can sell it for you know pretty penny later on in uh good conscience anyway so you had that but then there was this other thing i forgot to mention you know and uh it had to do with eschers you know, there's this guy who's been on the internet for uh, a long time uh, with honing, and he's helped a lot of people hone, and he was very active on forums and stuff. And um, and then something, like, weird went down. Like, someone was saying that uh, they bought an Escher from him and that it had a photocopied label. I looked at photos of it, and I have to agree that the photos of that stone did not look straight. I, I don't know what else went down. It just got called out on eBay. Um, guy left a negative comment, and a, the guy's response was completely unintelligible. It was like, you sold me a rock with a photocopied label, and the response was, my favorite color is corn. I mean, it was literally that out of whack. Anyway, so, um, you know, I just started, uh, I, I started pulling my Escher out. This is my last Escher. Well, it's actually one of them. Um, I, I got rid of a lot of them. I, I hardly ever use them. They're great stones, you know. But, um, <clears throat> you know, if you're buying a, a stone for a lot of coin, 
you really got to know what you're doing. You got to learn to trust people on the internet. And sometimes, you know, just because someone's been selling things for a long time, that doesn't mean that they're not going to jack you. Apparently, that's the way life is. Um, the stones like this, these Eschers, I see them from time to time with no label on the stone, only on the box. And I, I don't know what that's about, and I don't know if it's legit. Now, some people will say it is legit, but I see a hole in the matrix here where if I was going to be unscrupulous, I could buy a box with a good stone, pull the stone, put a fake stone in the box. I mean, who needs the box, right? Oh, you'll notice that this box actually has a label inside. If you look closely, there are two labels. I don't know if you can pick up on that. I don't know why there are two labels, but, you know, this is as legit as it comes. This thing is from, like, I don't know, pre-1905 or something. Um, I'm actually going to move this out, too, because I, I, I never use it. I hone on it. It is my favorite blue-green. I wanted it forever. I found it. I used it a long time, a very long time. Um, but I just wanted to touch base on this thing with the the Escher labels. It's like I went back to that guy's account, and I don't see that comment anymore in his uh, comment history so something went down he must have went after the guy that left it and made him remove it or or something okay but i did see that and i did see the photos of what looked like to be a jacked up label to me so um you know don't be afraid to like call people on stuff if something doesn't look right call them on it ask them don't don't just throw your money at them because like you think they're god okay um did <laughs> this setup happens to be impeccable though um uh, original uh uh, I, I guess they were like a handler for uh, Escher and um, and this guy on the back uh, Crosby over on Fulton Street um, <clears throat> it seemed to have gone out of business around 1905 so this has got some age on it matching slurry stone real nice Escher um, people like the the blue uh, the yellow greens I like the blue greens this to me handles a lot better feels a lot better it's harder i get better edges with these i think the yellow greens are great for barbers because they were faster i do not think they were finer i understand that the the lighter colored particles floated up so they were finer you know in in the way the mud sediment separated out the finer stuff floated to the top but i also believe that diagenesis is very powerful and i believe that the darker sediment at the bottom underwent more pressure and heat and i believe that that created a stone that's better for me for honing um a lot of jnats like that you know deeper strata deep stratum you'll see that um just because it started out with coarser particles doesn't mean it ended up that way <clears throat> particle size is not the entirety of the story but it's a good start for understanding anyway i just wanted to touch base on uh, the fake escher thing you know um Anyway, you know, uh, and, and stamps in general. I mean, you know, there's this whole thing with stamps. and Okay, so you see this is Maruichi, right? And you see this is Maruichi, too. These, these are, like, stupid real. Um, people long ago, when I, long ago, like when dinosaurs roamed the earth. No. Um, when I first started, were telling stories about the Maruichi stamp. And little by slowly, that story is becoming like an onion skin. Layers are coming off. Um, I don't have an absolute story, but what I did get is some people who are very knowledgeable tell me that Mariwichi stones are not always Nakayama by default, okay? And this stamp is really not in any way synonymous with Maruka or indicative of a similar quality level, okay? That, that's what I've been told. Now, <clears throat> when somebody comes up with a written document to prove otherwise, fine. Until then, basically, my take on stamps is that most of it is bullshit. You know, there are people who will tell you that all of these stamps are like super... These, these are marketing tools, okay? That, that's all this stuff is, right? It's marketing tools, all right? Um, you know, a Kamisori uh, razor, it's a size, not a quality level. Um, the fact that this is a super select grade, whatever super select it means nothing these were marketing tools for them they're they're not like hanko like you would sign a document with uh, which you know the and not like a hanko stamp that you would use to sign like your mortgage these stamps are not on that level okay they may be important to the manufacturers because it indicates that it's their goods and they're very proud of their their product okay but to you and to me and to us as a user these stamps are simply marketing tools okay you can find 50 stones with that that have the stamp over here on the side that says uh 
high quality or um, uh, Jun uh, Shohanyama, you know, it, it won't even be from Nagayama. It won't even be from Shobodani. It'll just be a stone. They just throw the terms around. It goes out there, and and then that's that. And you know, and before the time of Iwasaki, there wasn't a whole lot of stamping going on. And those stones before his time. Now his time was what 60s, 50s, maybe. Before then, 20s, 30s, 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s. You know, the golden age of these stones. There were no stamps. There was no marketing. There were no fancy boxes with little, like, cute little birds on them and shit like that. Um, and those, st those stones inherently are have proven to be more desirable because they came from better uh, sources and uh, better locations and veins that are no longer accessible today. Anyway, <laughs> we love the stamps. I love the stamps. When I see a stamp stone, it makes me look. What matters is how the stone works. So... If your seller is selling a, a stone based on stamps, you're at a disadvantage. You should look to get a read on the stone. You can't see it, but I've actually honed on here. There are blade marks in here. And I don't think I'm ever going to sell this. I may someday. I don't use it, um, but I have used it. Um, you'll see all of my stones almost never have stamps on them. Um, but, but don't let unscrupulous sellers use this stuff, this festooning of ink as a weapon against you okay don't let it be overly impressive the only thing that matters is how does it work look at this stone this stone kicks serious ass no stamps okay it's not even a particularly hotsy totsy gorgeous karasu it just has a little bit of a hint in it i think that'll change i think the next layer that's coming up is going to be really active but right now i'm in the middle um whatever it it, it could be a plain jane stone um what, how does it hone? I tell you right now, this thing hones up edges that like basically wipe whiskers off my face like a squeegee takes water off your windshield. And that's what matters. Not this stamp, right? <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there, there's a treatise about stamps and all of this and all of that. And, you know, <laughs> I, I, I can't read it because I just don't want to get angry and fall into a pond of bullshit because it'll take me like a month to get the stink off me. All right. Uh, I just want to put the truth out there. You know, I sell stones, no joke. And um, stamps literally don't mean squat, right? They're nice. I love them, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, got to this guy, okay, which is the reason I feel comfortable about selling him finally, is this piece of awesomeness, okay? This lovely, lovely Mizu, okay? Um, no markings. No stamps, okay? But look, see the back? See these little patterns? It's almost like little florets. If you want to be like abstract, the way Japanese can be sometimes when they talk about patterns. Um, and, and it's a very good thing because I, I, I really enjoy their point of view on some of these things. Like, you know, Mokume and uh, what have you. Momiji, for example, Momiji to me still does not look like leaves, but I think it's a beautiful pattern. Anyway, these reminds me of like firework bursts in the sky, okay? I have only ever seen this look on one type of stone. Stupid old Ozuko from like old days Ozuko, when Ozuko was like a major thing, like Nakayama and Shobodani. Today, Ozuko is thrown around like everything. If it's very, very, very hard, like useless, very hard, like doorstop material, very, very hard. People call them Ozukos, all right? Um, this is this is just so heavenly to hone on. I, I might actually keep this. I, I, I don't know yet. Um, the, the feel um, on this stone is... It's like a combination of melting frozen chocolate and satin. It's... That's the wrong blade. Here we go. It's right up in very hard up to where I would say it's super hard. But it's right at the doorstep of super hard. Lapping it was not as difficult as it is with some of the super hard stones I've uh, been blessed with getting to try. But um, in general, Let's just comfortably say that this is very much into the very hard category, uh, making it a contender for any type of razor honing. 
that you would want to do. I, I love stones like this. I, I love the hardest stuff, even though they're harder to use. Um, the feedback is awesome. The uh, size of the stone is good. The shape is very, very good. There's one corner. Where is it? Over here. Th this is rolled off a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, there was like a little tiny outcropping of uh, skin. But um, in general, I would say that um, this is one of the finer Rizukos that uh, I've been blessed with being able to hone on. And I'm actually going to do a full progression on this tonight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video now. All right, with my little penguins here, okay? And um, I'll put my herder, because this is what I'm going to hone. Put my herder out. Very nice. I think this is a herder 77. Yeah, herder 77. Soul engine, full hollow, stiff grind. Anyway, so that's what I got. Anyway, I hope this wouldn't go too late. So look, it's summertime. You should be outdoors, enjoying the fine weather, getting in the pool, going in the lake, going in the ocean, doing all that good stuff. Don't forget to spend some time on your horns when you come home at night. Get some blades out, put some nice edges on them so you can get clean shaven and feel good in the morning when you go back out to enjoy more good times the next day. Anyway, remember, this is all about having fun. Until next time, take care. See you later.